Hey, what's happening, everybody? Uh, once again, it is Matthew back with a new episode of Wadi's channel. And yes, we are continuing on with the WW, or excuse me, WCW uh, 1990s review of the Gloob action figures. So, uh, in the last video, uh, we looked at five of the uh, wrestlers from Series 2 with the UK exclusive. And... I do have, let's see, six more carded figures here, but on top of those card figures, uh, there's an additional six figures here that I don't have that are un that I have loose, but obviously not on card. So I was thinking I could get this done in two videos, and if I wanted to make a 40-minute video, I probably could, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to break this down into three videos. So this video, we are, we are going to look at the uh, majority of the remaining carded figures. And uh, the one last carded figure I'm going to save for the next video because that's going to be part of the lot of uh, figures that I don't have cards for. And um, so uh, let's begin with the very first figure. And it is going to be Black Pants Sting. So when I first did the... Uh, series one part one video review i mentioned that uh sting had three different figures we saw the blue pants we saw the salmon pants uh version and we also had a black pants version so here is where the confusion lies when you look these figures up salmon and blue pants are are showing to be have showing to have been released in series one with the u.s version Whereas black pants were shown to be ha have been released in series two with the UK, but other people classify the series two or the black pants staying as a series one, the salmon pants as a series two. What is correct? I'm not 100% sure. Again, I didn't have these particular figures as a kid, so I wouldn't have known. But here is an also issue. I also kind of mentioned that video. When you look at the Sting figure on card, he's got the exact same background that I mentioned. Uh, you know, he has the same exact background as a Series 1 release of uh, action figures. So, they're not like, you know, your, your Series 2 releases. It looks just like the Series 1. So, it could be a Series 1, but because I'm in so many different avenues I've seen, it classified as a 2. For sake of argument, it's a two. And um, uh, da, 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 da. Venice Beach, California. Favorite holds a Stinger Splash and Scorpion Deathlock. Yeah. So this one's also kind of unique in the sense that I don't know if it's cut or if that's just how it was manufactured, but the way that it's kind of like slanted right here, no other uh, carded figure has this, so. Again, I don't know what that is, but uh, anyways, Sting has uh, four different action figures, three of them that look like this, and of course the one with his entrance gear. Not one of my favorite figures, because I don't like the pose. I, I think the pose is basically unplayable, you know, but... If you're a kid, you're going to work with it, and in fact, when you look at some of the other loop figures, yeah, of course, he's going to be, you know, uh, a better option for playability, and of course, Sting, you know, how do you not play with a Sting action figure if you're a kid? I mean, he absolutely is the face of the World Championship Wrestling franchise, and uh, give you some up-close and personal looks. So, I kind of mentioned this when I talked about the Series 1 Sting figures. So many of these characters that you would find, uh, Dingo Warrior, who later became Ultimate Warrior in WWF, and then, you know, Sting, they were, you know, a couple of gem buffs, big strong guys, with very limited uh, talent in ring, and uh, I guess a lot of people did not like working with them because of, of that fact. You know, they didn't really uh, have the, the maturity to 
to be constant professionals on a, on a global scale as, you know, what the NWA was or, you know, AWA, WF, all these big name brand companies or, you know, some of the lower territories. Legion of Doom, when I first heard that, you know, they were nothing more than body slam only guys, I'm like, that's crazy. Why? Because you had these two really huge buff guys, but they didn't have the in-ring experience uh, to be to be real workers. But what happens? You know, you, you learn on the job. And for someone like Sting, I mean, to me, I don't think you can find anyone today that's, that says that they've got a problem with Sting. Again, among WCW, my all-time favorite WCW wrestler, among my top 10 all-time favorite wrestlers, period. The fact that when uh, WCW was purchased, uh, what was it, 1999, 2000, 2001, around that time frame, and um, even before then, uh, I think Sting actually said something like, well, where everyone from WCW was jumping ship and going to the WWF, you know, he was never going to do that. And I really, you know, appreciate that loyalty. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just simply going for the money. And uh, you've got a fan base established here in WCW. Why are you going to give that up? So I definitely hold a lot of respect uh, for you know Sting as a man, and of course the character who always brought a lot of joy. You know, watching him and in all the home videos we used to watch, uh, his strap matches with Vader were always legendary. Now, among the U.S. version, uh, this figure was probably my fourth favorite. Among the UK figures, I would probably rate him somewhere around 7 or 8. Not a bad figure, it just there's a lot of really fantastic UK figures. The value of this one is crazy. Uh, whether you want him loose or if you want him on card, definitely one of the most expensive figures. And uh, we are talking about flying Brian Pillman. So, at one point last year... I don't know, episodes 35, 36, something like that. When I was first uh, doing my review of the uh, Gloop figures, I was putting them in order of how I, how I valued them, you know, among my favorite figures, least favorite to most favorite. And uh, I actually rated the Bengal trunks higher because I like to look better than the blue trunks. But, but to be honest, I love this look now. Like, I would take this look, even without the value, over the Bengals. This is just an awesome piece. And so, so often in my videos, I always talk about like, well, I really didn't grow up watching Brian Pillman and I really don't know that much about him. So I really don't have any history. But here's the problem. I had the Brian Pillman Series 1 figure as a kid. So I've always known about that figure. I've always known the name Brian Pillman. It's like, how can you have so much history with the, with the person that you know nothing about? It's crazy to think of it that way. But he, he does have one of my favorite poses. Hands up like Sting, which I don't like. You know, some people prefer closed fist as opposed to open hand. It looks great. I mean, I like it. I like the head mold. I like the hair. You know, he the way he's kind of crouched over a little bit, it kind of gives you like that El Gigante type of, you know, coming to attack you. <laughs> Monster trying to attack you type of deal. So I, I think it's just a great looking figure. And um, do I have the other Jacks? I'm trying to look at the. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, uh, I was talking about the uh, the Hollywood Blondes, and I uh, just kind of reach over real quick, and uh, we see that the Brian Pillman and uh, Steve Austin tag team. I swear to God, seeing Steve Austin with hair is like insane it's like the craziest thing it's like so uncommon and just uncomfortable to see a see a man that you're so used to seeing bald with hair it's just so awkward <laughs> but uh that is the uh flying brian pullman figure um well he grew up in cincinnati ohio which is awesome because cincinnati bengals uh who he was drafted by which is awesome um Flying body press, favorite uh, favorite uh, motto or favorite hold. Motto. This motto is really awesome. It's not the size of the dog in the fight that matters, but the size of the fight in the dog. Right on. 
<laughs> uh, next up, again, another one of my all-time favorite figures. U.S. or U U.K., it doesn't matter. And it is going to be Brian P or excuse me, uh, Barry Windham. So, again, we are staying in order of how they are released on here. Oddly enough, because I told you this is still Series 1, I'm going to keep that a little bit in order. So we moved on from Jimmy Garvin last video. So officially, Brian Pillman to Barry Windham on this card. So Barry Windham or Brian Pillman, if you want either of these figures on card, you're probably going to have to look at somewhere in the $200 plus neighborhood. And even as a loose figure, I've seen the figure sell for close to 200 bucks. So very valuable figure, awesome piece. And again, when I did that video way back when, I classified the black trunks version uh, much higher than I classified the blue. But I think I would change that to this today. I think I'd break the blue trunks a little, a little bit as a better figure. Maybe more because it just pops better, you know, it just stands out. But Barry Windham, regardless, irrelevant as to which one uh, you like most, it is just an awesome action figure. One of the absolute elite. So, uh, let's see what we know about Barry Windham. So it kind of says the exact same stuff on this card that it said on the Series 1 card. So really no difference there. And I keep getting these messages that my battery or, you know, when you make a lot of videos and I haven't moved them to the hard drive, it's taking up too much space. So, but I hope I won't run out of memory before these videos end. All right, so that was Barry Windham. Uh, that means, uh, you see, and then here's what's kind of messed up is this card is, you know, completely different. Whereas you went from, you know, Pillman to Barry Windham after Jimmy Garvin. This Jimmy Garvin, you go from Big John to Sting. And, and we've seen the Big John where he was placed before so I don't like the fact that they keep changing the, the layout of these pictures because again I try to put them based on how, how these are, are displayed so but either way you look at it uh, Sting or excuse me Lex Luger is going to be the next man standing in line Prefer the blue, the green and yellow over the strictly blue Lex Luger from Series 1, of course. Still, with the Lex Luger, no change as far as the actual physical figure. And this is what I'm talking about. Kind of like, you know, you're Sting, you're Barry Windham, you're Brian Pillman, Lex Luger, Ric Flair, Sid Vicious, uh, Arn Anderson. I mean, these guys are all just remakes or the exact same figure with just very simple repaints and uh, you know much better to have this one on card than the series one I mean it is what it is you know still if you're trying to complete a collection it's an it's an important piece so um, little statues I mean like I said ever since uh, I forgot who was it uh, who the person was that told me that uh, one of my commenters uh, left a message and called him Little Satchels. I'm like, ever since then, that's all I could think of is, is you know, think, looking at them, I'm like, you know what? They're absolutely right. Because these are, you know, when you look at Hasbro, they're very cartoony in their appearance. Yeah, you can look at certain characters and be like, yeah, that's absolutely IRS. That's definitely Coco Beware, Virgil, or you know Hulk Hogan or something. Definitely, but I mean these give you like those three D print scans that you would find today, and back at a time when they really didn't have you know those capabilities. So for the total package, Lex Luger, someone you just simply want to put on your shelf and be like, you know what? I grew up watching this guy. That was awesome. Yeah, another member of the Four Horsemen, you know, he kind of got, got into it 
and ended up getting his butt kicked and, and forced out. You know what happens. I mean, the Four Horsemen as a faction were essentially a revolving door. <laughs> uh, when I think Lex Luger, yes, the narcissist Lex Luger will always be be like kind of like the first thing that pops up because that guy, that character was so annoying. But, you know, he's this bodybuilder, big buff bodybuilder guy, just kind of like, you know, showing off in front of his mirror and everything. But then later on, you know, 4th of July and, and, and uh, what was it, 93, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it was actually on an episode of like Raw or something. I don't know. I just kind of remember watching TV when, when it aired and uh, they were doing the body slam competition. Uh, Crush, who was actually the only guy at the time to ever get Yokozuna off his off his feet in a match, and this time he get, he got in there and you know he got him halfway up, but just couldn't seal the deal. Macho Man, who was like one of the strongest guys I'd ever seen, he couldn't do anything with Yokozuna. I thought that was incredible, but uh, you know what? Punches Yokozuna in the face, throws him into a turnbuckle. The man's dazed, you know, really couldn't do anything. He was out of it. At that point, he didn't have the ability to kind of hold his weight down. So uh, he was basically drunk on his feet at that moment. And, you know, easy pickings for a man of, you know, Lex Luger's strength to, to body slam him. And, yeah, we all know, you know, he didn't actually body slam Yokozuna. Yokozuna did have to jump up a little bit in order to have him slam him but when you're a kid you're not thinking that you're just thinking hey he lifted him up simple enough all right uh so that is lex luger next man up is nature boy rick flair the kind of odd thing or funny thing i like about this figure every time someone looks at a series two rick flair figure it's always the same argument or the same frustration Yes, you know, because, you know, Ric Flair was so famous for wearing red trunks with the, with the lightning bolt on him. And I, I kind of laugh it off every time because I, I, the way that, you know, people talk about it so much, it's, it's always hilarious. And, and I enjoy the commentary as well and uh, the kind of remarks. And, yeah, they kind of say it like that, so, <laughs> and the little sarcastic tone. And uh, I'm a stickler. I, I love the fact when, especially with my customs, I love the fact when uh, these figures are created uh, with characters wearing their in-ring gear or, you know, things that they were famous for wearing before. That That is that is awesome. But at the same time, to me, it doesn't have to be 100% have to be something that they wore before. If it's a brand new design that some random designer came up with and created and painted up, Again, I'm perfectly fine with this uh, Ric Flair. In fact, I love this Ric Flair so much better than the Blue Trunks version. And, you know, the red, again, pops more. That that little small lightning bolt is just enough of a design. I don't know if you can see it underneath the belt here. So, to make it a complete different figure. And it's just uh, it's just a fun figure, you know, overall. I, I, I don't hate on it, so um, the fact that so many folks out there are kind of despise the figure, it's new, it's different, I'm okay with it. Again, the glue Ric Flair, not my favorite Ric Flair figure. In fact, I probably cherish like the Remco Ric Flair better. Face-wise, yeah, uh, this is definitely you know one of the better Ric Flair head sculpts out there. The body itself... I had as a kid I talked about and you know I loved it but again by today's standards I, I wouldn't feel I wouldn't cherish the figure the same way uh, let's see oh he's from Charlotte I never knew that so flying knee drop in figure four leg lock as his favorite holds of course figure four famous for Ric Flair you can like it or not like it but learn to love it because it's the best thing around Eh, it'll do. So, once again, just one last look at the Ric Flair. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and uh, 
Let's see what I got here. Four, six. You know what? I'm going to actually skip ahead. Now, I don't have this figure on card. But I'm going to make this my last figure for this video. Uh, we're only at 20 minutes. So, I mean, I could go more, longer if I wanted to. But I'll break this down into three parts. So, again, with the four horsemen, the two staples has always been Ric Flair and Arn Anderson. With this particular figure, I actually like the U.S. version better. And it's the exact same figure with the exact same color scheme. Why do I like this one better? Or why do I like the U.S. version better? Simply put, this is simply a straight red trunks all around. Where in Series 1, you know, he's got red on the front, but he's got white on the back. So that simple dual color in paint scheme makes a world of difference. And that allows me to enjoy that color scheme or that figure better than the Series 2 release. To me, you would think it would have been the complete opposite, that the Series 1 would have had like this, and Series 2 would have the, the dual out. Because it seems like everything from Series 2 is just done better. Now, why... I just don't get it. Why would they only release one set of action figures in Series 1, uh, and then just simply do a, a Series 2 release in the United Kingdom? That, to me, would, would, would never have meshed well with me as a kid if I was actually more into these figures and I'm sure any other fans you know who grew up playing with these or I'm sure there were collectors back in the early 90s and all you know it's not like a new thing or anything and um, the only thing I could possibly imagine is that you know these figures just did so just didn't didn't just I don't try to think the right way to say it they just did so poorly uh, number wise that the company had no choice but to move all of their production overseas I mean that's the only thing I could imagine and what did I say back in the first video when I saw these figures I only saw them in a dollar store I never saw them at Toys R Us I never saw them at like a KB Toys uh, they were never at like a Kmart or Ventures or you know any of those type of stores, uh, retail stores. So having these figures or the few that I, we did have as, as kids was nice, but if, if they really did that poorly, you know, selling, I, I can understand why. But why would you just not have to simply? cut your losses and then just stop at series one why would you have done a, a series two release <laughs> the great thing about you know things like ebay uh mercari you know etc is that it allowed fans to acquire figures that they never had access to uh, previously so so that was awesome you guys remember the day back in back in ebay days when it first started off when you won something on auction and you had to write a check and mail that in and you had to wait a few days for the person to get the check, cash it, before they would mail you your stuff. <laughs> I kind of remember those those fun days. I never really used eBay, but I, but I always remember that part. Well, uh, so that is, what is that, six figures I looked at? Five, six. And, of course, the last tag team set that I have. So I have this on U.S. card. I have this on U.K. card. I thought about saving my money and not buying two different cards of the same figures, but, you know, I still want all the tag team cards regardless. And again, having a U.S. version and a U.K. version was, was really nice. So, you can at least make out the red on Ric Flair, but with Arn Anderson, obviously, you're not going to be able to, to see the red trunks on the back. So, kind of looking at the back of the card... As I mentioned back in series one, where uh, the series where the two packs mimic the exact same information on the back of the single cards, absolutely no change whatsoever. Uh, looking at this, so what's important to this is this message right up here. So the basically the generals of the four horsemen. Uh, two of the four horsemen, uh, generals of the ring. 
like I said, the, the, the two staples of the Four Horsemen, they were like the only two guys that were always present. Uh... So not only am I missing a few, a handful of uh, individual figures, and uh, I think one or two tag teams on card, um, card tag team, but I'm also missing the ring. I actually don't have any of the rings, which is, which sucks, because they're so small and everything. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get that. Uh, I don't foresee myself <laughs> buying any wrestling belt, so that's probably not on the itinerary. Right now, I believe I have uh, Lex Luger and I think I have Ric Flair. So I have Lex and uh, Lex Luger and Ric Flair actually in package for the 14-inch figures. I don't know if I'm going to include them in this video because, again, two out of four figures. You know, I'll show them. Why not? If the, if there's time, if it's like a 25-minute video will pass, and I'll just uh, review them at a later time, preferably at a time when I have all four of them on card, or all four in package. Alright, so I have one carded figure remaining, and uh, six figures total. I'm going to end this video here, and I'm going to come back with a part three, and that will conclude the UK exclusives. <clears throat> Alright, thanks everybody.